Hello everyone. My name is Shivam Mittal. I'm a senior SAP consultant on the professional services ERP team at Amazon Web Services. In this video, I'm going to provide an overview and demonstration of the new AWS launch wizard features, which we have added during the last one year based on feedbacks from customers. If you did not already know, nearly everything we build at AWS is the result of feedback from more than 5,000 SAP customers that run SAP on AWS. AWS Launch Wizard provides a guided deployment experience for SAP applications on AWS, allowing you to deploy a production ready SAP system such as S4 HANA in just a few hours versus weeks or months and scale them within minutes. This slide provides some important enhancements that we have added over the years to Launch Wizard. We have already covered the Launch Wizard end-to-end -end execution steps and the high availability feature in the previous two videos. So if you need any information related to these topics, please look at those videos. You can find the links to those videos in summary section. Now, let me provide you a quick overview of the features that have been added to Launch Wizard recently, which I will demonstrate in this video. The first feature which was requested by a lot of customers is the capability to add application servers and HANA scale out subordinate nodes after the deployment of SAP applications. Historically, we have customers perform SAP sizing to define the size of SAP components like HANA DB and application servers to meet their multi-year growth plans as you onboard new users to your SAP applications on AWS, extend them to new regions or implement new functionality, your application performance requirements will likely grow, requiring you to add more app servers or database subordinate nodes. Since Launch Wizard provides both add and delete capability, customers can add application server capacity for critical business events like month end and quarter end and remove them after the event. Piggybacking on the FSX for NetApp ONTAP certification for HANA, Launch Wizard now supports deploying HANA database data and log volumes on NetApp ONTAP volumes. Additionally, using Launch Wizard, you can now deploy your HANA scale out systems using HANA host auto failover and opt in to deploy additional standby nodes to improve availability of HANA databases. The third feature is the capability to leverage as is or customize launch wizard backend cloud formation templates and scripts. When you deploy the launch wizard, it creates the service catalog product and also uploads all CFTs and scripts to a S3 bucket. This allows you to repeat application deployments that are configured exactly the same or with customization using AWS service catalog with customized CFTs and scripts based on your SAP application deployment requirements. The next feature I would like to highlight is the ability to clone the inputs and use them for future deployments. Previously, entering the inputs was a time consuming task. Now, by using clone features, all of your inputs from the selected previous deployment will be replicated for new deployment. You just have to provide a couple of mandatory and sensitive parameters. This feature help in reducing the human error and expedite the deployment process. You can also use a bring your own subscription for Red Hat operating system when deploying SAP application like you used to do with SUSE operating system. You can also use specific custom IPs to be assigned to SAP servers during the deployment so that required firewall settings for internal and external 
customers can be done in advance. We have also added support to provide custom host names for app servers and HANA subordinate nodes and also started supporting newly certified storage types like FSX for NetApp ONTAP for HANA for data and log volumes, GP3, IO2, and instance types such as R6i, X2, etc., and OS type SUSE 15 SP4 in Launch Wizard. These launches allow you to consume latest AWS innovation and reduce the TCO of running SAP application on AWS. With all these new features, Launch Wizard also supports now installation of Solution Manager, S4 HANA 2022, and S4 HANA Foundation 2022 in customers' SAP landscape. Let me now start with demonstration of these new features. First, I want to show you how you can install an additional application server for any already installed Launch Wizard based SAP system. I first go to the Launch Wizard service. selecting SAP, where it will show me all the earlier deployed Launch Wizard templates. Now, I'm going to select the Launch Wizard deployment, go to the Actions, where you can see we have the option to deploy additional components. Here you have options to perform add new HANA subordinate node, standby node and additional application server installation. If you have a scale out installation, then HANA subordinate node, standby node options will also be active. So let's say I need to install a new application server to handle additional business load. So I am going to select the option of additional application server. We need to provide few configuration details under this first section. You should have an AMI of any of your app server created before starting this process to clone and update resources for additional application server installation. There are certain prerequisites before creating the AMI, like image should be bootable. So if you have any third party software or configuration which you think can create issue during the boot process. So please disable that temporarily. Also, if you have enabled auto start parameter in SAP profiles for automatically start off SAP and HANA with boot, please disable that also temporarily. I have already created an AMI for my app server, which I am going to select. The next step is to provide the host name of new app server and the instance number. Select the instance sizing. You can either provide the instance type or require vCPU and memory for app server. Similar to launch wizard deployment, we have option here to provide pre and post deployment scripts if you need to run during the installation. Now let's go to the next step to provide infrastructure details. Here you can see all the values are already pre-populated from the main deployments and there should not be any need to make changes here. So now let's move to the next section If all information looks accurate here, you can start deployment, which should take around 10 minutes to get your new application server fully installed and ready to be added in the logon group to serve user requests. You can also check the progress of app server installation under additional component. 
once this app server has been added by launch wizard it can later be removed so for example if your application needs additional application server during a weekend you can add it using the launch wizard and delete it once the requirement is completed within minutes now let's look at the second feature of cloning the deployment let's say you deployed your first system using the launch wizard and now you need to deploy another sap system so we can select the deployment under actions choose the option clone deployment depending on your source and target there will be minimal changes like sap system sid host names sizing and instance numbers in the deployment but cloning will save time and reduce coordination efforts to gather all the required networking security and application specific information to deploy the sap system so now let's proceed with the cloning process and with help of this cloning process i'm going to demonstrate other new features of launch wizard similar to other launch wizard deployments you need to provide first a unique name and a meaningful description to your installation here i would like to explain the new feature of how you can save backend cfts and scripts in s3 bucket and deploy launch wizard as service catalog product for customization this can be done by only selecting create aws service catalog product option you can provide s3 bucket name and launch wizard will use this to save the backend codes of sap deployment this feature is available for any new or cloned deployment you can see all other infrastructure related information is already available on this step due to the cloning process now after infra settings we will go to the next step to provide application settings here we can provide new sap and hana system sid and instance numbers volume types should remain the same as the source system you can also see we have option here to choose amazon fsx for netapp on tap for hana database for data and log file systems for my demonstration i will keep same volume type as my source gp3 there should not be any other change under application settings now let's go to the deployment model here we have added new feature of allowing byos bring your own subscription for your operating system licenses if required select bring your own image option and your operating system and provide the ami id in my case i am going to keep the default option as source you also need to change the host names here for your sap servers you can also enter custom ip address for sap servers installation to preplan the internal and external firewall settings if you want to assign it in my case i am going to keep it default change the 
instance type of SAP servers based on your new SAP system requirements. In my scenario, I am going to keep it same. Now I want to show you the feature which enables customers to provide custom host names for the application server. You can define the number of app servers and choose the host names based on your internal naming convention. Now let's move to the next step. This step is to provide SAP application software related information. If you are installing the same SAP product, then on this screen, you need to provide your master password. And update the application instance numbers as required. Now click on next. This brings us to the last step of launch wizard deployment. Review your inputs and if all looks accurate, then you can start the deployment. This completes the SAP installation using cloning process. Let me show you now the availability of launch wizard solution under service catalog as product. If your organization is using service catalog as the DevOps service for the infrastructure deployment, then you can select this launch wizard product, launch it, customize it and use it for the SAP application deployment on AWS similar to other service catalog products of your environment. The last thing I want to show you is the availability of launch wizard CFTs and scripts in the S3 bucket, which can be used for customization to meet business requirements for SAP application deployment. So I will go to my S3 bucket, which I selected during launch wizard deployment. Under this bucket, select your deployment. Here we have our CFTs and scripts available for the launch wizard deployed installation. Now you know how to use the latest features of AWS Launch Wizard, installing additional application server post deployment of SAP application, cloning the Launch Wizard deployment, code customization, and bringing your own OS license with allowing custom IP and host names for the application installation. I hope this video will help to make your SAP on AWS deployments smoother. For more automated solutions deployment inside your SAP landscape, you can also ask your AWS representative to connect with the AWS professional services team. Thanks for watching.